Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We did it. We filled up the Jaspies 13 box championship week football mixer. And we're giving away that beautiful guy right there. Patrick Mahomes. Nice. So it's like a $2,000, close to a $2,000 value by, by our estimates right there. BGS9. There are all the boxes involved in here. So mostly a couple older boxes, but mostly 2019 2020 right there very big thank you to all of these folks for getting in now whether you bought spots straight up or whether you won spots in those optic hanger boxes we appreciate you getting in no matter how you got in there are the teams right there thank you let's roll it let's randomize it names and teams five times one two three four and a one fifth and final time yes one more time again so we got Bradley down to Kenneth. Thanks everyone, once again, appreciate it. We got a couple more mixers that are pretty close to Breaksville as well. One and a four, five times for the teams. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five times, we got the Cleveland Browns down to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now remember, trade at your own risk. I'm going to give you a trade window right now. We're going to pause the video after I read off all these names, give you a little bit of a trade window and kind of give you some time to think about what you could possibly pull out of these for these teams. But remember, the spot that you trade could be the Mahomes spot too. I don't know. So just be careful. Caution. Bradley with the Browns. Chris Gerard with the Bengals. Tyler L. with the Bills. Colin with the Seahawks. Jason with the Rams. Or James. Check that. James with the Rams. Jack Townsend with the Bears. Ryan Harold with the New York Football Giants. Nick Stover with the Panthers, Gale with the Chargers, Townsend with the Cardinals, Colby with the Lions, Brett with the uh, Buccaneers, Yancey with the Ravens, Jack with the Texans, David with the Broncos, Roy with the Cowboys, Chris Gerard with the Chiefs, Greg with the Titans, Jonathan with the Vikings, Simon with the Colts, Sumin with the Dolphins, Chris with the Patriots, Matthew with my Raiders, Townsend with the Saints, Ben with the Washington football team, uh, Townsend with the Eagles, Zach Wynn with the Niners, Aaron Clark with the Falcons, Nick Stover with the Jets, Ryan Harold with the spot you won Jaguars, Ollie with the Pack, and Kenneth with the Steelers. We already have Seahawks up for trade, Panthers and Jets also up for trade. Let's get all this on one screen, sort by column B. Let's box these up right here. All right, so once again, I'm going to pause the video really quick, and when we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades, and then the break. Stick around. All right, welcome back, folks. There was indeed a trade. Zach and Colin got a deal done. So uh, it's a divisional swap, Niners and Seahawks swap. So Colin is out of the Seahawks spot and uh, into the Niners spot. We'll put a T next to there for trade so we know who draws first blood in the trade. And Zach now has the Hawks of the Sea, same T. You'll see that on your labels too. Get this fly out of the way here. All right, so trade window is closed. Let's print. Let's rip. Good luck, everybody. And that will give away at the very end. So if you got randomized a bad team, or if you had a good team, but it turns out to be a bad break, just think about this guy right here. Think about this awesome card right here. There are your subgrades right there. You can see him. So think about that. In fact, I'll leave this right next to me right here so I remember to, to randomize it. Okay, let's knock out this big box right here. Prestige. So if you wonder where these uh, these retail hanger packs come from, they come from these these boxes. That's where they're born. Good luck, everybody. What did everyone think of uh, last weekend's divisional games? We are all here together for the. We watched the Saturday games together. So I guess I guess I haven't seen you. I haven't seen the crews. I haven't seen you guys since the 
Sunday games. Let's see what I remember from the Sunday games. Let's pull up some scores here. All right. Browns at Chiefs. Browns were looking a little spry. I think the game almost got out of hand for them in the second quarter when the Chiefs scored 13 points. And I thought, and I was on the Chiefs, minus, uh, minus, a, minus 10, I think, a lot of points. And so I thought, this is it. This is where, this is where it's going to happen. You know, but unfortunately, Patrick Mahomes got concussed, and uh, and the, and you know the Chiefs kind of had to hang on. And then the Buccaneers cruised, actually. I think there were some moments of difficulty for the Buccaneers, but the interceptions, the turnovers from the Chiefs, obviously helped greatly. I think there was a few interceptions by Breeze. I think, did Jared Cook fumble a ball, I want to say? Did he lose a fumble? I'm almost certain that he did. When Jared Cook was on the Raiders, that was a little bit of an, bit of an issue. There was hands issues. So now, let's see what happens in the con. So this is the conference uh, week mixer. What's going to happen? Ben's going to think the Bills are going to roll the Chiefs this weekend. Go Pack Go, says J-Mac. Lonnie's saying, are, are the Bills going to go to the Super Bowl? Brady sitting there? Waiting for them? Just waiting to ruin their dreams, just like they did when they were divisional rivals? Well, there's Patrick Mahomes leading us off here. So here's the final final list, the final printout right here. So that Mahomes and all Mahomes will go to Chris Gerard and the Chiefs. And obviously all these green foil parallels and prestige will ship. All inserts will ship. It's just vet commons that won't ship. We got league leaders, Christian McCaffrey. Panthers, that'll go to Nick Stover. And just in the interest of time, I'm only going to pull the the rookies of Joe Burrow to. Uh, Justin Herbert, the top quarterbacks. Just to make this go a little bit more quickly. Yeah, that baseball mixer we should be able to knock out tonight as well, Lonnie. It might That might be with late night with Sean by the time we get all that done, but we're actually pretty close to that. That hockey mixer is awfully close, too. Make this a nice mixer night. And each mixer has a nice giveaway attached to it, too, so keep an eye on that. With all these boxes here, everyone should get at least a little something, whether it's a stack of rookies or hopefully, hopefully better. Let's do a let's do a quick uh, while we're opening up all this stuff. Let's do a quick post mortem on the on the teams that crash out of the divisional round. So the Rams are out early on Saturday. What do the Rams need to do? What do the Rams need to do? 
I suppose they they probably privately want to upgrade at that quarterback position, but I think Goff is still getting paid a lot of money, and he only just signed a contract a couple years ago, so I think they're kind of stuck with him. There's Joe Burrow for Chris Gerard and the Bengals. That defense is legit, so they really don't need they really don't need that much. Upgrade the what, the offensive line, yeah, yeah. There you go. That could use a little work. So maybe they're maybe they're not that far away. A top wide receiver, Ben saying. Yeah, I know you got to. That's what I think they think too. Get rid of Jared Go Jared Goof says David T. But who's gonna, a who's going to take him? B. I'm sure there's there's going to be a big cap hit if they release him. I think you're kind of stuck with them, unless they unless they draft a QB, right? And like maybe some later rounds, they draft a QB or something like that, a project QB or a Taysom Hill type QB, something. I think they, they definitely missed, uh, I think they definitely missed Cooper Cup. But I feel like maybe, maybe a nice wide receiver could help or a, they run a lot of multi multi tight end sets maybe maybe if they maybe if they have a if they have more of a pass catching tight end or something like that that could be that could be an interesting play there's Tom Brady right here so Mahomes's and Tom Brady's and I think Kyler Murray's are like the cards that are the vet cards that are shipping second year Kyler Murray's. There's Jalen Hurts for the Eagles, Jack Townsend. All right, Ben's arguing they need a bigger target, literally a bigger target like like Michael Thomas. Woods and Robert Woods and Cooper Cup are on the smaller side. Yeah, maybe they could use something like that. Ultimately, I don't think they're too if you I don't think they're too far away, right? If Jared Goff's hand was fine. You know, with that, there's a Prism multi pack, same year, 2020. Right, they got Cam Akers. Yeah, I don't think they're that far away. Yeah, Akers, I think, maybe started off off the season a little on the slower side, but but I think he he just kept getting better and better with each week that that went on and kind of peaked at the right time. Right, they definitely. Need to, I think they're going to draft a quarterback, Oliver. I don't know if they're going to roll with roll with Wolford as your backup. Maybe they'll maybe they'll try to find someone. I don't know. But ultimately, the Rams aren't that far away. I think. Post mortem. Ravens are another team that crashed out. Now maybe maybe unfairly, maybe that game would have been a lot a lot more exciting and a lot closer if if Lamar Jackson wasn't knocked out of the game. What are the Ran uh, what do the Ravens need to do? Where where are there again, this is a team that got to, that won a lot of games down the stretch, looked really dominant. You know, but and got to the divisional round of the playoffs, but fell short. What are the next steps for them? I think, I don't know if you're going to really change that offense too much. Maybe just add, freshen up the offense a little bit, add some, add some pieces here and there. Maybe a, you know, maybe another receiver. I mean, I, I think Marquise Brown would be great stretching the field, but maybe you need another reliable pass catcher. And I'm sure Lamar Jackson will do what he needs to do to work on his passing and accuracy and whatnot in the offseason. I think it seems like year to year he's been making some nice improvements, so I'm sure he'll work on that. Yeah, shore up that defense maybe, get back to a little some some Ravens defense, Ben saying. Yeah, Walvers agrees. He's saying they, he need, they need receivers. Yeah, maybe look for a receiver, second or third round. Something like that. Reinvest in the O line, says Oliver. Right, because if that O line is strong, if that O line can move around, then they can do whatever they want in the running game. 
which is their string. And that's always going to set up the pass. And that could be what they need. Because once that pass is set up by the run, they got to have some rely reliable pass catchers. It just can't be Marquise Brown flying down the sideline and then Mark Andrews hovering somewhere in the flats. I feel like that just doesn't, doesn't work when you're like in a third and long situation. Josh is asking, tell me my secret to opening packs so fast. I don't know. When you when you do this 40 hours a week for the last six and a half years, going going on seven later this fall, I think you get you get used to opening up packs pretty quickly and more importantly, safely. Townsend with the Eagles. Quickly and safely. I'll show you in a second. I have to open up those packs over there. Ooh, is, oh, I thought that might have been a Justin Herbert, but just a green Jacob Eason. There's a Prism Brady, Philip Lindsay Silver. I don't know, I feel like everyone has their own pack opening technique. Ultimately, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just do it the way that feels the most comfortable without damaging the cards. We've had some, uh, we've had some casuals think that I open up the packs too roughly, but... Those are, those are the armchair breakers out there. Save a prison Mahomes, too. Any of those Mahomeses I miss will also ship Jake from State Farm. All right, first of all, with the packs... You have to flip, I flip them to where the, the lip of the pack is the most comfortable for me. So that's why whenever you, you see me flip stacks like this around, I want the lip to be right here. Right? Now, basically, you're just kind of gripping the pack on the sides right here so you're not damaging the corners. You're not grabbing the edges too hard. And I usually kind of palm that right there. And then you just rip from the top, and then I rip open and out. Right? So open and out. So that prevents it from catching on the corners. So that's why you see me open and then move out that way. Now these packs are a little thin, so it's a little more difficult. But that's what it is. Open and out. And I keep the pack like this so I can just basically dump them out right there without handling it again too much. That's it. And then you just, over the years, you just increase speed on it. And I always just kind of, you always just kind of roll with where the pack, the packaging takes you, right? I don't, you never see me, so like if the pack kind of screws up like this, you know, you just kind of roll with where the pack takes you and then rip open the rest so you don't hurt those corners. And my palm is really catching this right here, this edge right here, so it doesn't hurt the corners, basically. That's it. That's, that, that's, a, that's, that's how I open packs, anyway. I think Nick opens it differently. Jason opens it differently. We all have our own way of opening it with speed. And then when I'm holding cards, right, so if I grab a stack like this, I kind of 
have the fat part of the my thumb hold the edge right here. I'm keeping my hand separated away from the pack there and holding the edge right here or something like that. All right, and have the card resting on my pinky there. So if you, uh, I think if you play, uh, if you play a lot of like poker or like cards, here's a Joe Burrow red, white, and blue for Chris Gerard. I think you'll get a feel for the cards as well. You know, so, because it's a lot like playing cards. Let's do this one here. So you can see all the boxes set up on the top camera right there. Let's do 20. Let's go back in time to 2013. So I think if if you if you can uh, if you can deal cards like playing cards, poker cards, pretty well, you'll get a good idea of how to how to carefully hold larger stacks of cards like this. So again. Slide finger down right there, open up the pack, get it clear from the corners, and place it on like that. Pretty easy. Yeah, we're having a ripper. Yeah, sometimes you just like Jason saying, you just got to just grip it and rip it. Uh, post mortem. On the divisional teams that crashed out of the playoffs. What about the Browns? What did the Browns need to do? I think the Browns had an excellent season. I think Kevin Stefanski could could be could be coach of the year. Baker Mayfield looks a lot better. I think maybe just a little bit of experience overall on the entire team. I think would be great. You know, just just keep just keep adding depth, keep evolving. I think each individual player has to just all the young players especially just has to keep evolving. You know, yeah, because overall they're pretty strong. You know, like Denzel Ward's already out there. Maybe you just add more depth behind him. You know, another nickel back or something like that. More defensive backs. Get, get the linebacking core stronger. They already got Miles Garrett up front. Add another pass rusher. Yeah, linebackers may be what they need, but maybe another pass rusher just to get double teams away from Miles Garrett. I think that would be great. Yeah, oh, I think they got better once Odell Beckham Jr. was gone, though, Ben. What do you think? I feel like they, they weren't forcing the ball to Odell Beckham Jr., and they kept running the ball more with, with Nick Chubb, and I think that turned out to be the plan. So if Odell Beckham Jr. can get on board with, with that plan and just know that they're not going to feed him the ball 15 times a game, you know. Then I think that offense could really work. There's Darius Slay rookie out. It's kind of like when uh, when Todd Gurley left the Rams, they were able to kind of get back to where they kind of honestly needed to be. I know, Arthur, man, it's been six, almost seven now, dude. <laughs> Probably by the end of the summer, early fall, it'll be like seven years. No, there was no requirement to get Odell Beckham Jr. the ball, but I th I think I think he can. You know what happens if you don't get him the ball, though. I think maybe on the field, Baker Mayfield maybe thought that let's get Odell Beckham Jr. going early. You know, like there's that sort of narrative. We got Stedman Bailey, who I think is a Ram. Is Stedman Bailey still with us? Didn't he... He got shot in the head, but he's alive. Okay, right, yeah. The unknown assailants pulled up alongside them, opened, fired. He survived two gunshot wounds to the head, but was in critical and stable condition. Driver of the vehicle sustained life-threatening injuries. Bailey underwent surgery, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, he's still with us. Now, I know this is expired, Rams, but 
James, but they may do they may do something for you. Panini's usually pretty good about that. I mean, maybe they'll dig up the Stedman Bailey autograph yourself, uh, or or most likely they'll give you some points in return. Or Drew, it's Drew Brees Prism Silver. Let's say set set one of those aside. Probably gonna retire soon. Hmm. Should we move on to the Saints? Ethan saying the team that lost last week and that will have the toughest time getting back to the playoffs is the Saints, he says. Yeah, I think you're right. What's the postmortem on the Saints? I mean, if they lose Drew Brees, I think that's that's the biggest that's the biggest challenge. Michael Thomas getting multiple surgeries. Did you guys see that? So he was been he's been banged up all season. Go get Watson, Helen saying. Ooh. Do they have the assets, cap space for someone like Watson? Yeah, they're losing Breeze, Ethan's pointing out. They're going to have to overpay on Kamara. Can't afford Michael Thomas. Helen's saying trade Michael Thomas. I, I did hear that. Jer I woke up to that Jared Porter story, the former GM for the Mets. That's, what an idiot. I do maybe certified some certified let's do 2018 certified then we'll do 2020 certified but yeah listen I know I know there's I know this is the demographic of this is mostly male maybe skews younger we do have a younger audience don't don't send pictures of your privates to to women don't do that unsolicited I assure you they don't like it <laughs> it's one thing if they want you to that's a different story, but not unsolicited. Probably shouldn't do that unless you're in a, you'd be in a relationship with them. Probably. <laughs> Makes you mad they had to be an old cub. Yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, things like that probably probably happen more more often than we'd like. But hey, I'm glad the Mets were just like, they didn't hesitate. Ooh, really, Oliver? I'm glad I set that aside. That last Breeze Silver Prism out of 2013 sold for 60, 70 bucks. That's not bad. There you go, Saints. Jack Townsend with the Saints. Joshua Zamora saying, Cowboys should give Dak and a first rounder to the Jags and get Trevor Lawrence. Super Bowl bound, you heard it first. I don't know. Arthur's Arthur's a Cowboys fan. He thinks that idea is garbage. Yeah, I can't say that's a good idea. They're 13 out of 50. Mason Rudolph. I mean, I think the Cowboys are probably closer to playoff success than you think. If you send this guy away, I mean, and go with Trevor Lawrence, I think you're kind of just starting over. I think that sets back the organization a number of years. I would rather just go with a, a healthy Dak Prescott at that point. There's Derwin James with the Chargers. There's Josh McCown. Are, are the Cowboys out of franchise tags for, for Dak Prescott? Or can they do one more? I feel like they can do one more. But they're in a, they're in a tricky spot. You, you pay the guy. He's going to get a lot of offers, Helen's thinking, and then... Eventually, the Cowboys would have to overpay for him. There's Hines for the Colts, Simon. Kenneth has the Steelers, gets the Mason Rudolph relic. Lorenzo Carter, 99. Marcus Allen to one uh, to uh, 9.99, and then there's Larry Fitzgerald to 99. You're a diehard Cowboys fan? You don't want Dak? Let's get Deshaun then. 
Oh, there's some points right here. Winner take all on the points. I think uh, Arthur wants Dak Prescott instead of... I think, well, I think they should have paid Dak before they paid Zeke, though. I don't know why they paid Zeke and Elliott all that money. Especially with all the numbers that... I mean, poor running backs, but it's just how it works. It's just... Running backs just don't last long. Uh, there's Bradley Chubb to 399. Right, that Dallas defense, like just as recently as two years ago, Arthur, it's pretty strong. If they had, if they had Dak Prescott from this year, <laughs> right, in the first half until before he got injured, if they had Dak Prescott from this year, and that defense from two years ago, woo. I think that would have been scary. All right, 2020 this time. All right, yeah, exactly, Oliver. Running backs are easy, easier to replace. Franchise QBs? Not so much. So this is a 2020 current current edition. Yeah, Mark Ingram got released by the by the Ravens. Isn't replacing a running back like replacing a cashier a cashier? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean. Just in general, like the the running backs, like Adrian Peterson, just just don't aren't super common, you know. But I mean, he's great, no doubt. But you know, running backs like. Zeke Elliott gets they, they get used up so much. They get so many carries. They get banged up. They don't have proper. Yeah, you just have to just have to kind of committee the running back a little bit more. I think in this day and age. There's Zach Moss to 249. Buffalo Tyler with the Bills. Now Arthur's thinking that Kellen Moore will be head coach for the Eagles, says Arthur Peru. Huh? What do you guys think? No? Silence. From the Eagles fan? Callum Moore? No, says Nick Jaspi. Callum Moore, head coach for the Eagles, and then Romo will come out of the booth to be OC for the Cowboys. And it's out of 25, Yetter Gross Matos. I, I don't think Romo's coming out. Romo makes a lot of money. In the booth, Arthur. A lot more than OC money. This goes to Carolina, Nick Stober. I don't know if Romo's going to come out of the booth for less than... Ooh! Wow! A one-of-one one Joe Burrow. Chris Gerard with the Bengals. He bought the mixer spot straight up and gets rewarded with this one-of-one one Joe Burrow base. Wow. Looks pretty good. Well, maybe that top right corner is not my favorite up there if we're splitting hairs. I mean, you really don't have to grade one of ones, but. That's pretty nice. Out of a mixer. Think about it. We just grabbed a box of 2020 certified football, tossed it into this mixer. That's the one that had it. It's pretty nice. That's, what, that's why these mixers can be really fun and special, folks. Chris Gerard, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. He should come back healthy. I like that black border. Looks really sick there too. There's Ashton Davis to 399. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn. Chris Murphy, what up? I did have a good weekend. Pretty chill. Nothing too. Nothing too crazy. 
There's J.K. Dobbins. That's a relic for the Ravens. Yancey with that one. I don't know. I ask Arthur. Did Arthur, has, has Ezekiel Elliott kind of slowed down a little bit? He's parting? I, I would think so. He's gotten in trouble a couple of times early in his career. I feel like no one, he hasn't gotten in trouble this season. He's just taking it. I mean, you can party. <laughs> That's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not getting in trouble for it. Still party and not get in trouble. There's C.D. Lamb. New generation relic. Speaking of the Cowboys, Roy with the boys. What do I think the Kyle's asking? What do I think the Bears are going to do with their QB situation? That's a very good question. I mean, I didn't think they were going to retain. Here's Cole Komet. Speaking of the Bears, I didn't think uh, they would keep that coaching team. So now I'm wondering if if the Bears are thinking about actually keeping Trubisky, which I think would make my Bears fan friends just freak out. Uh, okay, let's do some contenders here. This is 2019 contenders, so we're looking for these guys right here. Yeah, John Samuelson's a Bears guy. I don't know if he wants Trubisky around. But see, that's the staff that, dra that drafted up for Tri Trubisky. Think about that. So you think that staff is going to say, yeah, that's it. We're done. We were wrong. I think Trubisky might be on his last year going into this season, or maybe it's an option. I think I think this might be his fifth year. When was he drafted? I think a lot of the rookie contracts usually have like a fourth or fifth year option that the big debate is do we pick it up or not. Or maybe they didn't pick it up and now he's a... I don't know. John Samuelson or Bears fans, you guys, you guys remember? He's the Mahomes Watson year, so 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Maybe it's a fourth year option that they might have to pick up, fifth year option. I don't know. I think maybe another year under contract. And I think they might roll with him for another year. <laughs> Rex is like, how can Arthur be a Cowboys fan? Shouldn't he be a Cardinals fan? Arthur might be showing his age a little bit. Yeah, there were no Cardinals when Arthur was growing up. I think Arthur's talked about this. I think I think Arthur's dad was a Cowboys fan. Maybe old, older generations were in that in that area of the Peru team. We'll do uh, top bottom randomizers for that. And our first auto oh, not an autograph, but our first numbered card, 80 at 99 championship ticket, Todd Gurley Rams edition. It's for James. Juwan Winfrey is our first autograph for the Broncos, my rivals. That goes to David T. And there is an NFL Inc. Kyle Rudolph. Nice. 116 out of 149. Kyle Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, going to Jonathan and the Minnesota Vikings. There you go. There's David Blow. Bluff. I think he got, didn't he get some time this year when Stafford went down? 
Detroit, that'll be for Colby and the Lions. We got a redemption here. Right, he got a start this year, right? Yeah. There's Julian Love for the Giants. That's going to be for Ryan Harold. The guy that just walked in here right now. I know Nick's hair is getting a lot long. I don't think Nick's got. I I may have gotten one or two haircuts during this pandemic. No fan for Denver. I think Nick's maybe gotten zero. I think he might have done a. Uh, I think he told me he did. He did like a a home haircut, a home trim. But I don't think he, that. I think that was maybe like four or five months ago. Maybe this uh, no, that's, save that. Maybe this obsidian. No, this is a lot of base cards. So let's finish off this mosaic. Should we get Nick a Floby? <laughs> how does it, how does it, how does that technology even work? Yeah, and now and I I would have gotten probably three or four haircuts within during this time of the pandemic. So I've. This this hair, look at this mop. This is out of this is out of control. It's, it's getting way way too long in the bag. It's so that's why you're seeing me wear a lot of hats because it's just it's. I would waste like a, I would waste like a tub of, of like hair wax. Just trying to just trying to even do my hair. Seriously, like when I'm not wearing a hat, I look like I look like some kid in BTS. It's like it's like BTS when they do their their folk hippie music phase. I can make a Star Trek Tribble out of my hair. The trouble, the trouble with tribbles, tribbles or tibbles. Oh, there's an R in there. I don't know. Got to watch out for how they mutate and clone themselves. All right, mosaic. We're almost done, folks. We got Cole Komet and a Justin Herbert mosaic. Nice. The trouble with tribbles. Townsend with the Bears. And this is what the Chargers were looking for. Gale got randomized the bolts. A nice Justin Herbert. Mosaic pattern. Rookie card. Nice. Did the Chargers have their head coach yet? There's Joey Bosa. So obviously the red Baker Mayfield, they're not numbered, but that will ship. That's a parallel, right? Inserts will ship. You know, but this AJ Green is Chris Jones. Those are vet comments, so those won't ship. TJ Watt Silver will ship. No, if that that Chargers coaching situation is settled, but I think I saw I thought I saw something where they were going with a a defensive minded head coach, and I was just like, why would why would the Chargers do that? There's Willie Rofe, old chief, going to Chris Gerard. Don't you want to? 
get some get get like the next Sean McVay to to coach coach Justin Herbert. That's what I would, that's what I would think. Cam Akers raising his stock in the playoffs. That's for the Rams. Here's a silver Chase Claypool. That's for Kenny G. Kenneth. Ken. Kenny. KG. With the silver Claypool. Jordan Love. Gasicki. Nice Jordan Love, Green Bay. That'll be for Oliver, Ollie with the pack. There's a Joe Burrow base. Red Justin Herbert, nice. There's another one, Gail. These are pretty nice. And a base Joe Burrow for Chris and the Bengals. Goes along nicely with that one of one you got earlier. And Van Jefferson for the Rams. That looks like a special parallel. A white mosaic, maybe? That's out of 25. Nice. It'll be for James and the Rams. Michael Thomas right here. All right, onwards. Let's go with... That's kind of a nice prison blaster box there. Let's go with Obsidian. Yeah, that was not a bad mosaic box at all. Hobby box. Haven't seen one of those in a little while. Base cards on the bottom, yes. We got Michael P. Ryan. Tyreek Hill behind Chad Johnson. We got J.K. Dobbins to 100, Eruption Relic. What? It's just one night, though, right? Rex, Rex is saying no, no Jaspies tomorrow for him. This is boss. Is working third to train us on new stuff. I could write you a note. There's Tyler Johnson. The rookie Dobbins goes to Yancey and the Ravens. The Tyler Johnson goes to the Buccaneers, Brett Rogers. He may raise his stock this weekend. Oh, and that is 119 out of 150. We got four out of 10. Aurora, Garrison Hurst. Remember Garrison Hurst? Niners, Colin, drawing first blood in that trade. With the Garrison Hurst autograph. And the relic is Devin Duvernay, relic auto. Dual relic and autograph, Ravens, Yancey with the Purple Birds. Right, Rex. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's for for your mental health, which is which is important in this day and age. It's always been important, but I think businesses are taking it more seriously now. All right, 2020 black. So we got the heavy base stuff out of the way. Now we're we're gonna finish strong with some of the. Some of the higher end stuff here. There's Larry Fitzgerald to 99. We got Van Jefferson, two color patch. Out of 50 for the Rams, James.
Do we have Silver Ink Auto, James Morgan, 121 out of 199, two color patch, Nick Stover, an autograph. And we've got a Ray Lewis, 9 out of 10, Storm Signatures. What time is it? Game time. Ray Lewis on card autograph for Yancey and the Ravens. I always say that Ray Lewis needs like an alarm clock. I would wake up on time every day if it was Ray Lewis waking me up. Let's get some of that spectra going here. And what time is it? Wake up time? I'd be like, yes, sir. There'd be no snooze button on that Ray Lewis alarm clock. All right, this is 2020 Spectra. And, ooh, that's an autograph on the bottom. All right. Let's see, I thought that was something else. I'm going to use this blank card here to hide some of the hits a little bit. We've got Cole Komet, Neon Green Scope to 35 for the Bears. It'll be for Townsend. We've got the DJ Dallas die cut. It's 36 out of 50 for Seattle. That'll be for Zach Gwynn. We got a Deontay Johnson, 9 out of 10. Fireworks fabric, two color patch. Steelers, Kenny. And looks like a Hall of Fame autograph. It's Russ Grimm. Hall of Fame in 2010 for the Washington football team. Ben on the board. You can put it on the board. 17 out of 50. Darnell Mooney, Bears. 9 out of 99. We got Michael Thomas die cut for the Saints to 50. That'll be for uh, Townsend. We got a Matt Ryan, 98 out of 99. Brilliance relic for the Falcons. That's for Aaron Clark. And then we've got Mitch Trubisky. We were just talking about him earlier. Signatures for Townsend. Thirteen out of twenty. Two more packs to go. We'll move on to the one of the final three boxes. We got Anthony McFarland Jr. Three out of seventy-five. Todd Gurley Falcons edition die cut to thirty. Aaron Clark with the Falcons. We got championship gear, Fletcher Cox, Philadelphia Eagles. Jack Townsend with the Fly Eagles fly. Five out of 75 on that one. And the last one here is Nate Stanley, rookie autograph for the Vikings, Minnesota. That'll be for Jonathan. And the final pack for 2020 Spectra Football. There's J.J. Watt, Texans. Out of 60, Texans in a big transitional period here. I got to get this right. Got to make Deshaun Watson happy. Townsend with the Texans. We got Rise Above for the Redskins. That's going to be for Ben. 75. And you got Joe Montana, 26 out of 99. Epic Legends Relic 
for the Niners. Colin with San Francisco. Twenty six out of ninety nine. Yeah, we we uh, switched it up here. That's an effective switch. I like it. There's Chase Young, the elusive Chase Young. You never, almost never see his autograph live. Two color patch, an autograph for Ben and the Washington football team. One out of five. Look at that. Woo. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. All right, let's do. These guys, we'll close out with the NT. That's NT Collegiate. We'll close out with that. This is uh, Prism. Is this what is this a choice box? Oh, no, this is Prism T-Mall. Yeah. In fact, we have Prism T-Mall on the site, ladies and gentlemen. So you can get an idea of, of what that T-Mall is going to look like. I think we just have to do one more. Um, just a, How's that filler doing? I think we just have one filler to go on that. We pulled out the remaining teams and put them into a team random, which has 11 spots left. Okay. We can work on that at some point tonight. Quez Watkins, Silver, Kyle Fuller, Kenneth Murray, and CJ Henderson. All right, nothing too exciting there, but maybe in the other team all stuff. If you're looking for exclusive yellow and red parallels, exclusive to the set, that's what that's what we're chasing. So this is 2019 Prism Football Blaster Edition. Jordan Poyer. I wonder if any relation to one of our customers, TJ Poyer. Thurman Thomas. This one goes to the Bills, by the way. Tyler with that. So does that Thurman Thomas. Nikhil Harry is your rookie gear relic for the Pats, Chris Gerard. Tony Pollard, we got Kike Kuti, Trace McSorley. All right, nothing too crazy there. But let's close out with that NT. Let's see what we got. That's NT Collegiate, by the way. Does NT Collegiate have a checklist? Or was it Immaculate that doesn't have the checklist? If it doesn't have a checklist for whatever reason, then we'll go by our uh, no checklist or, or college rules. If they're in their college gear, they'll go to the team they played for the longest. And if they're retired, they'll go to the team they played for the longest. But I think there is a checklist. I think it's immaculate that doesn't have a checklist. All right, so we're going strictly by checklists, of course. There it is right there for that final box. And we'll do a couple quick randomizers. And, of course, we'll randomize this. So think about it. If, you're, if you've been having a bad break, if your teams aren't hitting, this is the ultimate hit right there. All it takes is just one good dice roll, one good random.org, and then, bam, your break is saved. This box could save your break, too.
Did I do a train whistle for that Joe Burrow? I don't. I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing my mind. I feel like I did, but maybe I didn't. Is that a base card on the bottom or a hit? Let me just double check really quick. Oh no, that's a hit. I did, says Kyle. All right, thanks. It's just so long ago. <laughs> AJ Brown, 35 out of 49. That goes to Tennessee. And that will be for Greg S. Fang. We've got Chris Godwin to 75. That'll be for Brett and the Buccaneers. Oh, and a book. It's uh, Tua. 27 out of 30. Autograph as well. Nice. Dual relic and autograph, Tua Tungvaloa for the Dolphins. That's going to be for Sue Min with the Dolphins. just use this little team bag here and our, our shipping team will find the right case for that so nice and his Alabama gear it's pretty strong next up is David Montgomery 88 out of 99 for the Bears Townsend with that one We got Joshua Kelly, eight out of forty-nine. Josh Kelly for the Chargers. That's going to be for Gale. Got another big relic here, Michael Hardman Jr., twenty out of twenty-five. He went from a red team to a red team. Chiefs will get that one, of course. Chris Gerard. We got a Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. Three-color patch and autograph. 16 out of 99. Car Cardinals? Cardinals, Arizona with that with that one. Townsend. A couple more here. We've got T. Higgins, Isaiah Simmons's teammate. Four, 17 out of 49. Three color patch and autograph. Nice looking one for the Bengals. Chris Gerard. And the last one here is, ooh, a nice one. 25 out of 49. Do I give it, do we give it two colors, that purple in the corner? Two color patch and autograph, Justin Jefferson. Who knew that it would be Justin's who would be the top rookies in this rookie class? And that'll be for Jonathan in Minnesota. There you go, Jonathan. Nice hit. Thanks for getting in. Appreciate it. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That was a nice box, too. The Tua, the Justin Jefferson, some pretty great stuff. Thanks, everybody, for getting in. We really appreciate it. We'll do a recap after we do these randomizers 
as well. Here's what we're going to do. We're, we'll do a top-bottom randomizer for all those contenders cards. Name on top, we'll get the uh, Mahomes. Second name, we'll get the Sad Constellation, the 150 points. All right. Thanks, everybody. Let's see who wins it. Let's close out some of these windows here. Do I have enough random.org windows open? New dice, yes. And I don't have anything else to randomize, right? No, that's it. Just those two. All right. So let's flip back to this screen right here. So there's some new dice. Here's the top bottom randomizer. And let's grab all the names here from Townsend and the Cardinals down to Ben and the Washington football team. Let's copy all of those names, get them into another blank list here. We'll use the same dice roll for both lists, and that's going to be eight, four and a four, hard eight. One. And eighth and final time, that'll be top. So the, oh, you see it right there. Top is on top. So the, I think there are a handful of these. The top cards will get those. All right, on this side right here, four and a four, eight the hard way, hard eight. Name on top gets them homes. Second name, Constellation Prize. Good luck, everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. Fingers crossed, everybody. First off, thanks, everyone, for getting in. I really appreciate it. Turned out to be a pretty solid break, too. Second name right here, Yancey. Sorry, consolation prize, 150 points. So close. And congrats to Brett Rogers, who won a spot in Optic 8. Congrats to you. He had the Buccaneers. I think that Tyler Johnson may have been the only hit that he got out of the entire break. So, hey, congrats, man. There is the nice Patrick Mahomes, silver to nine, edges, corner surface, all, or edges and corners, a nine, five, centering a nine, surface at eight. You still get a nine out of it. That's awesome. There you go. Congrats to you. Thanks, everybody, for getting in. Let's do a quick little recap here. Turned out to be a pretty nice break overall as well. T. Higgins, Josh Kelly, Justin Jefferson right here. We got a train whistle, uh, Chase Young. It was pretty nice. And his elusive autographs. You rarely see his autos. Some nice stuff out of Spectra. Hall of Fame autographs. Ray Lewis. Garrison Hurst. There's the Tyler Johnson. Some Joe Burrow, some color in that Justin Herbert, which is pretty nice. Noah Fant. Yeder Gross Matos, Zach Moss, Bradley Chubb rookie card, rookie patch auto. Stedman Bailey, red, white, and blue. Joe Burrow was pretty strong as well. Some other Burrows. And, of course, that one of one that popped out of certified is pretty strong as well. There it is. Thanks, everybody. That was Jaspi's 13-box championship week football mixer. We might set up another one since it's sold out so quickly. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.